Hey, my name is Margaret Wong, and I'm an immigration lawyer. And today I'm here to talk about O visa and extraordinary persons. Hola, el nombre de ella es Margaret Wong. Ella es la abogada y fundadora de Margaret Wong and Associates. Y mi nombre es Stephanie Ayala. Y hoy ella viene a hablar aquí acerca de la visa O y de personas extraordinarias. Our first question is, what are the two visas I can use to come to the United States if I have extraordinary ability? Okay. Extraordinary ability means that I'm the top one to maybe 3% of the whole national or international population. You can come to America either as an O-1 visa, what is the non-immigrant visa waiver, non-immigrant visa, which is an O-1, or the green card, which is based on EB-11 or EB-1A. Okay. What is the difference between the O visa and the EB-11? O is parallel track. As I always said in the immigration world, you always think parallel track. And that applies to anything in life. So in this case, O visa is the parallel track of EB-11, who, which is also the same as EB-1A because EB-1 have three categories, 111213 one, one, or 1A, 1B, 1C. So 1A is extraordinary scientists, um, squash players, swimmers, Olympic uh, dancers, gymnasts, scientists. EB1B is national, is national waiver is actually two. EB1T is professors with tenure track or permanent researchers whose employer have more than three in the same department. That's EB1B. And EB1C is intra-company transfer. So they're all first category. And that's important. Our next question is, what kinds of work can count as extraordinary ability? A writer, a scientist, an artist, or what? Actually, when the law first started after 1997, I still remember because there's a lot of artists in America who are very much free agency. Before 97, most people get green card through employer base. So after 97, they started the O visa and the persons of extraordinary ability and skills because there's so many free agency. But through the years, the definition of free agency also evolved. There was a time that the employer, for example, I'm an art gallery. I have to sell extraordinary art to offer a position to that artist who is extraordinary. Now, it doesn't matter who the employer is. Like, uh, I could be an agent to sponsor a young and hungry artist as long as they are of extraordinary caliber. So the laws on employer definition also change. Of course, the, the employer should have enough money to pay the artist, but nowadays it's not as important. It's not like a labor certification or perm cases where the employer, you have to show tax return if you hire less than 100 people. If you hire more than 100, they don't need to show tax return, but you still have to certify the 100 people, you know, stuff like that. So through the years, the O category and the EB11 category have changed, but mostly all people would qualify. It could be a scientist, it could be a swimmer, it could be an artist, it could be an entrepreneur because you have made so much money through the years that, um, but the Obama entrepreneur regulation, or not even the law, executive action never came in. Under Obama, the board of directors have, be, have to be outside board of directors, cannot be family with three people. You have to raise money from people who are angel investors, established ones. That law never came in. But if this entrepreneur have done a lot of turnaround, have done a lot, a lot, then he or she could also be an EB-11. So what are the criteria for proving extraordinary ability? Now, that's one thing wonderful about O visas and EB-11 green cards. O visa is very, very, even though it's three out of 10, and if you check my web, check all lawyers' web, they have what's an O visa, all the category, but don't be 
embarrassed by it. Because, for example, you're a musician, you have produced two CDs, you have son in Carnegie Hall, you have, so probably you already qualified for an O, and I'm just, I haven't even looked at your CV yet or your repertoire yet. But basically, you need to qualify three out of 10. So what are most of those 10 is common sense, right? If you are that great, you need to be in the newspapers or in trade journals. You should have written articles either about your own work or about other people's work. Like if I'm a writer, so for example, Anne Pantry, which is one of my favorite, uh, she would have written on other other writers' books on this is a beautiful book, you know, you couldn't put it down. So judging other people's work um, and also written up in New York Times, that's another old visa, but a lot of old visa have not been written up in the New York Times, Washington Post, you don't need that. I'm just giving you examples. So your name should be in the newspapers, you should have been recognized by other people in your trade. You should have been um, known, like for example, I'm a lawyer, so my name is always in the court cases, in the filings, um, so uh, in, the, in the papers, be it good or bad. So these are all old visa category. So just think common sense. Right now, there's the problem now is in certain communities, not so much in the Latino countries because we don't know enough. I mean, we don't know enough about O's because we always thought oh, it's easier just to come illegally, but there's so much that we could do from a Latino countries. But mostly from India, China, there's a lot of fraud, uh, EB11, because, because, and I don't blame them, because right now those two countries are so oversubscribed because the lines are very long. Right now, the government, US government is scrutinizing Anytime it's a it's more Asian country, they scrutinize our O's and AB11 because we copy from each other and we paste it and say we publish this stuff like that. Thank you for watching our video here with attorney Margaret Wong. My name is Stephanie Ayala. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave any questions or comments down below that we can potentially use for future videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information about our law firm, check out our website at imwong.com and feel free to schedule a consultation at 216-566-9908. Thank you.